My name is Matthew Bruce, writer for the Love of Celluloid blog, and today I'm going to look back at Lucino Visconti's 1971 film, Death in Venice. There are few films I imagine as picturesque as Italian director Lucino Visconti's Death in Venice, based upon the novella by German writer Thomas Mann. This is a film that could be described as one long series of paintings, permeated with deep and meaningful dialogue, an open-ended essay, perhaps, that reflects on the meaning of life, death and art. The ever-dependable Dirk Bogard, most famous perhaps to his own personal and artistic detriment for his work on the light-hearted rank organisation comedies of the 50s and 60s, pulls out all the stops in his deadly serious performance of the protagonist Gustav von Aschenbach, something of an unsung musical genius, who travels to Venice, Italy, to convalesce after a period of great stress which has weakened his heart. Aschenbach is an awkward, solitary figure, a people-watcher who settles into the background, haunted by his past, flashbacks including the unexplained death of his daughter and the harsh criticism of his colleague on his philosophy of music, and the essence of art and beauty. He is tired of life's petty inconveniences and distracts himself with the contemplation of a boy, a fellow holidaymaker called Tadzio, played by Bjorn Andresen, by whom he is completely mesmerised. I have read the novella, and although some critics have argued that Aschenbach has a homosexual love for the boy, I think this is too easy an inference. To Aschenbach, Tadzio is youthful beauty made flesh, something that he longs to possess in his old, rather decrepit condition. Aschenbach's physical and emotional condition is made worse by the presence of cholera in Venice, a fact which is being kept from him and the unwitting tourists. Upon learning the truth, Aschenbach is eager to warn Tadzio's family of the pestilence that has gripped the city. Given the film's title, there are no illusions as to what happens in the end, I don't wish to say more for fear of spoiling the film for others, except that the end scene is incredibly moving, an indelible moment in cinema history, courtesy of Bogard. The direction and acting are masterful, as is the cinematography by Pasqualino de Santis. Moreover, the film has some of the most beautiful classical music I've ever heard, particularly the recurring music from Symphony No. 5 by Gustav Mahler. It is curious how in many ways the character of Aschenbach is a reflection of Bogard himself, who led a private life of which he was very protective. Perhaps there was a sort of empathy that attracted him to the role. Some viewers may find the repeated close-ups and tracking shots, particularly of Tadzio, tedious, but one cannot deny as a whole that the film is its own work of art. Death in Venice has recently had its long-awaited premiere Blu-ray release by the Criterion Collection, featuring a new 4K digital restoration of the film, various featurettes, original trailer, and an enclosed essay by critic Dennis Lim. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from For the Love of Celluloid blog. Follow me at the social media handles below and at the links in the video description.